Good day, grade 10s. Welcome to this next science lesson. In this lesson, we're going to carry on with motion in 1D. And we're going to talk about first converting units of velocity and speed. And then we're going to talk about two kinds of motion. And we're going to move on to equations of motion. So first of all, let's look at converting our units. So normally when we talk in um, everyday use, we'll talk about kilometers per hour. So if you're learning to drive and you see the road signs around the road, you'll see that they're say 60 or 50 or 120 and they are basically stating it in kilometers per hour. However, the SI unit for both speed and velocity is meters per second or you can write it as meters per second. Okay. So we need to be able to convert kilometers per hour to meters per second. We also need to be able to convert it both backwards in case they ask you what is the velocity in kilometers per hour. So let's do this. Let's say that I've got one kilometer per hour and I want to convert it to meters per second. So do you agree I would could write this as kilometers over hour, right? Now I want to convert this to meters over seconds. So what do I need to do? To get from kilometers to meters, I need to multiply by a thousand. And to get from hours, I have to get from hours to minutes and then from minutes to seconds. To get from hours to minutes, I have to multiply by 60. And again, to get from minutes to seconds, I have to multiply by 60 again. So in total, what we need to do is multiply the top, the numerator by 1000, and multiply the bottom, the denominator, by 60 times 60, which is 3600, which is the same as multiplying by 1000 and dividing by 3600. Now, obviously, we need to do the reverse of this if we're going from meters per second to kilometers per hour. So we're going from meters per second to, let's go to kilometers per second to kilometers per minute to kilometers per hour. I think that might be easier for you to do than the way I did it there. To get to meters, from meters to kilometers, do we agree that we need to divide by a thousand, right? So we're going to divide by a thousand to get the kilometers to meters. That's a thousand over one. So that would give us our kilometers per second. Then we want to get from kilometer seconds to minutes. But now what happens? There are 60 seconds in a minute. So we have to divide the denominator by 60 to get to minutes and then to get to hours what do we need to do we need to divide the denominator again by 60. So in this case to get from meters per seconds to kilometers per hour we need to divide the numerator by a thousand and divide the denominator by 3600 which means it's the same as multiplying by 3,600 and dividing by 1,000 because we're tipping and timesing. Right, so you guys, the reason I'm showing you this because, because, is because, because, is because um, it is very important that you know how to work this stuff out, okay? Right, now let's move on to the fact that there are two kinds of motion. There is motion with a constant velocity and motion with a constant acceleration. Okay, motion with a constant velocity and motion with a constant acceleration. If you have constant velocity, it means that there's no acceleration. Do you understand that? We are not speeding up or slowing down. We are remaining at a constant velocity. Whereas if we have constant, constant acceleration, it means that there is either positive acceleration or negative acceleration. In other words, we're either speeding up, but at a constant rate, or we are slowing down 
at a constant rate. Okay. So now let's talk about instantaneous speed and instantaneous velocity. Instantaneous velocity is we take the displacement and we divide it up into very small amount of time. Okay. In other words, we found out the velocity of the person at a tiny, tiny, tiny point. Okay. So we take the displacement divided by some very small amount of time, and that that is a vector quantity. It has the same direction as the displacement used. So in other words, what we're saying is, let's say you've got some dude and he's traveling along this path. Okay, he has the path. And I say to you, what is his velocity over the whole period? So we would take his total displacement and divide by the total amount of time. But if I say to you, what is his instantaneous velocity at this point here? What we do is we zoom in and we measure this tiny displacement here and we measure the time taken over that period. So we find out the tiny bit of displacement over the tiny amount of time and we find the instantaneous velocity. The velocity that this dude's doing just at this point in time. So to help you understand this a bit better, think about if you are cycling a race like the Argus, okay? So let's say if you think about the Argus, if you know about it, basically what happens is it's flattish at the beginning and then there's hills and then more hills and then hills and then more hills and then flat, kind of more or less, okay? Lots of hills in the Argus, okay? So now if I said to you, what is your total velocity? We would take the total displacement, total displacement, okay, over the total time which would be interesting because it's a circular thing, so you actually end up where you started with, so the velocity would be zero close to it. But if I want to know what is your instantaneous velocity at, for example, this point here, then I would zoom in here and I would measure just this displacement and measure how long it took me to do that. And obviously that instantaneous velocity is going to be much slower than if I found the instantaneous velocity at this point because yeah i'm speeding down the hill Whee! so i'm going super fast whereas yeah i'm going uh, 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 up a hill so yeah i'm going very very slowly so this bit here okay super fast going down the hill as i'm going down the hill this bit here would be my displacement and the time it takes to get from that point to that point would be the time that i would divide by and i would get an instantaneous velocity okay and because as you can see it's always going to be in the same direction as the displacement now the size and magnitude of the instantaneous velocity at the instant is equal to the instantaneous speed Okay, the only difference between these is that instantaneous speed has no direction. So the equation is delta x, v is equal to delta x over delta t. We've spoken about that already, okay? We've said that it is change in displacement over change in time. Now, what you need to know is that in the CAPS document, they require for you to be able to describe motion in several ways. You need to be able to use words diagrams, graphs, and equations, okay? You need to be able to do all of that in order for you to actually um, be able to pass the section and do what in the section. So you need to be able to do all of this. You can either do it using words, diagrams, graphs, or equation, or they can ask you to do each of those types of ways. So when solving a motion problem, if they didn't have to have a sketch already drawn, you need to draw a sketch, okay? You need to identify a reference point and then select a direction to be positive because remember these are vectors. You write down the symbols for all the variables and you fill in the variables and you check the signs, whether it's positive or negative, depending on the direction. And then you identify the appropriate equation. Finally, you substitute and solve for unknown variable. And sometimes we do need to use more than one equation. I don't know why the Q's been left out there. So your equations of motion, which you are given in your exams, you're given the equations of motion are VF is equal to VI plus A delta T. Delta X is equal to VF plus VI over 2 delta T. Delta X is VI 
t plus a half a delta t squared, and vf squared is equal to vr squared plus a delta x, 2 a delta x, where vf is your final velocity, vi is your initial velocity, delta x is your change in displacement, and delta t is your change in time. Right. So the best way to do this is actually to do some examples. So this is what we're going to do. Okay, so it says here, a body is traveling at 30 meters per second and it's decelerated by 3 meters per second squared. Okay, so the first thing I need to clarify with you guys before I have to solve this problem for you. When I say a body, I don't mean a dead body. I had an ex-student who, um, after me saying a body several for several weeks, in the exam, in the class, I would be going, a body does this, a body does this. He goes, what is your obsession with dead bodies? And it's not. A body in science just means an object, okay? In other words, we don't know what it is. It either could be a physical, it could be a human, it could be an asteroid, it could be um, a koala bear. We don't know what the body is. We just mean as in an object, okay? So there's a body and it's traveling at 30 meters per second, okay? And it's decelerated by three meters per second squared. So therefore we can say it's slowed down by three meters per second squared. Calculate the distance traveled in eight seconds. Okay, so the way I want you to do these questions, and I mean this, is what we're going to do, we don't really need to do a drawing for this, but we do need to write down our variables. We've got VF, VI, A, delta x and delta t. So these are your variables, right? You need to write them down always. Okay, so now we've got vf, vi, a, delta x and delta t. On your formula sheet, you will have the equations of motion, which are vf squared is vi squared plus 2a delta x, vf is equal to vi plus 2a delta x, Delta x is equal to vi delta t plus a half a t squared. And delta x is equal to vf plus vi over 2 delta t. Okay, so now it says the body is traveling at 30 meters per second. So that's at the initial velocity. So that is 30. It's decelerated by 3 meters per second, which means it's got a negative acceleration of 3. And it says calculate the distance traveled in eight seconds. We want the displacement, the distance, and the time is eight seconds. So we need an equation that doesn't have any VF in it, okay? So if we look at it, this first equation's got VF in it. The second equation's got VF. This equation, yeah, does not have VF in it. So maybe we can use this. We've got delta X, is equal to vi delta t plus a half a delta t all squared. That is the equation that we're going to use. There's no vf in it, and it's got delta x, which we're trying to, be trying to solve for. So the initial velocity is 30 multiplied by 8 plus a half. Notice the acceleration is negative because it's decelerating, so make sure you write that down, minus 3. And then delta t is 8 squared. So therefore, 30 times 8 is 200. Oh, sorry, I just want to get rid of that horrible little peak there. Um, so 30 times 8 is 240 minus 3 over 2 multiplied by 8 squared, which is 64, which is 240 minus, that becomes 32, and that becomes 3 twos are 6, and 3 threes are 9. And now I need my calculator. So let's get out the calculator. So it's 240, oh, let's switch it on, shall we? 240 minus, no, let's delete, delete, minus 96 equals 144. So this is equal to 144. And we need to check the units we're using, and the units we're using is SI units. So therefore, this is meters. So we can say that we've worked out the displacement 
in eight seconds to be 144 meters okay right now it says Right, now it says, they want the velocity after traveling 144 meters. So now we want the final velocity, okay? So we can use either this equation or this equation or this equation. Um, it really doesn't matter which one we use. I am going to use VF. Actually, that's a T. This is supposed to be T. Sorry. VF is equal to VI plus A delta T. The reason I'm using this is because we've got the initial velocity originally, we've got the acceleration, and they gave us the time, or they do say the velocity after traveling 144 meters. So let's assume that we don't know that the time is the same. Okay, so let's rather use the first equation. Where we've got VF squared is equal to VI squared plus 2a delta x. So we want the final velocity, do you agree? The initial velocity they gave us is 30, the acceleration is negative 3, and delta x is what they are asking us about, and they want the final velocity. So this is equal to 30 squared plus 2 times the acceleration of minus 3 times by the displacement of 144. So 30 squared is 900 minus, uh, okay, 6 times 144, 6 fours are 24, 6 fours are 24, that's 26, carry 2, um, that's 464. So let's pop that in our calculator. So we've got 900 minus 464 equals, and then we can square root the answer and it equals, and let's press the C button, 20.8788. So the final velocity, VF, equals 20,88 meters per second. So the velocity after traveling, okay, for 144 meters, if you're only decelerating at, at three meters per second, in other words, we're accelerating in minus three, is 20, comma eight eight meters per second per second sorry now it says they want the time taken for the for the body to stop they want to know how long will it take for the body to stop so let's again start with this and what do we have the only thing we have is that the initial velocity is 30 the acceleration is minus three the final velocity is zero, okay, and we want to know the time taken. So now let us look at our equations. We want something that's got VF, VIA, and gives us T, and this equation here would work. So we've got VF equals VI plus A delta T. The final velocity is zero. The initial velocity is 30 plus minus 3 delta T. So if we take that across, we have got 30 equals negative 3 delta t, and that's a minus 30. So do you agree that delta t is going to be 10 seconds? So it's going to take 10 seconds for this to come to a stop. There you go. Right, now let's look at the next question, shall we? It says the brakes of an airplane given give a uniform acceleration of minus five meters per second. Okay, so I can't draw to save my life, but here is my runway. Oh gosh, let's start again, shall we? Here is my runway. And here is my airplane. There's the body of the airplane. Okay, with the tail and the tail and two wings, and here's the other. Okay, there's the airplane. It gives a uniform acceleration of negative five. It says calculate the minimum length runway we need. We want to know what delta x is, the minimum length runway, to bring it to a stop 
we got VF is equal to zero if it touches down at 75 meters per second. So we want to know what is the minimum length. Okay, so let's write out what we've got. We've got VF is equal to zero. We want it to stop. The initial velocity is 75. The delta X is what we want. And the acceleration is slowing down. It's slowing down its negative acceleration of minus five. Okay. So we know that VF is equal to VI plus A delta T. Would that work? We've got to no, know because we don't want T. We want to know the minimum length. We've got VI squared equals VI squared plus 2A delta X. Do we have the final velocity? Yes. Do we have the initial velocity? Yes. Do we have the acceleration? Yes. Do we want delta X? Yes. Okay, so that works. So we can go VF squared is equal to vi squared plus 2a delta x. The final velocity is zero. The initial velocity is 75, which we want to squared, plus 2. The acceleration is negative 5, and we want the delta x. So do you agree we're going to have minus 75 squared divided by negative 10 is equal to delta x? Oopsie, sorry. What happened there? So then, if we get out our calculator, we can say 75 squared divided by 10 equals 562.5 meters. 562,5 meters. So the minimum run where we need, the absolute minimum, is 562,5 meters. Right. Let's try another example. It says a car is traveling at 30 meters per second. Okay, so we've got a road and we've got a car. Okay, yeah, I know again, terrible drawing. Um, okay, so it's a terrible drawing of a car. Okay, so it is traveling, its initial velocity is 30 meters per second, its final velocity is zero, and this displacement is 50 meters, and it says they want to know the time it takes. So again, VF, VI, A, delta X, delta T. The final velocity, if something has come to rest, it means it's being stopped. So therefore, the final velocity that comes to rest is zero. The initial velocity, okay, is 30 meters per second. The acceleration, we don't know. We don't know the acceleration. We want the time, and we have the displacement is 50. Okay, so let's go through our equations. It's VF equals VI plus A delta T. VF squared is equal to VI squared plus 2A delta X. Um, delta X is equal to VF plus VI over 2 delta T. And we've got delta X is equal to VI delta T plus a half A delta T squared. Okay, so do we have the final velocity? Yes. Do you have the initial velocity? Yes. Do we have the acceleration? No. So we can't use that straight off. Acceleration's in there. We can't use that. This one doesn't have acceleration and this one does. So let's look at this equation. We've got delta x is equal to vf plus vi over 2 delta t. Do we have the final velocity? Yes. Do we have the initial velocity? Yes. Do we have the change in time? No, it's what we want. Do we have delta x? Yes. Excellent. So we can solve this. We can go 50 is equal to the final velocity is 0 plus the initial velocity is 30 over 2 times our delta t. So therefore, we've got 50 divided by 15 is equal to delta t. So I could do this the long way, but I'm actually going to be lazy if I can get this down thing to work for me. There we go. And we're going to go. 
we're going to go 50 divided by 15 equals 3.33. So therefore, it's going to take delta T is going to be 3,33 meters per second. Sorry, no, that's the wrong unit. It's 3.33 seconds. Just 3.33 seconds. Remember to always check what you are working out, and that is times at seconds. Right, good, let's move on. Okay, so now we've got a car, and the car is accelerating. The car is accelerating with a straight line from a speed of 10 meters per second to a speed of 30 meters per second in five seconds. What is the car's average acceleration? So a car accelerates in a straight line from a speed of 10 meters per second. Again, we've got a car. I'm going to try and draw a different car. So here's our car, and there's a little baggy, and it's got a little round pin. Okay, and then there, and there's a round thing, and there's it again. See, horrible at drawing. Okay, but it's accelerating. There we go. And there's a door. Okay, right. And there, it is accelerating in a straight line from a speed, and initial velocity is 10, to a speed of 30 meters, final velocity is 30, and the time is five seconds. It says, what is the car's average acceleration? Okay, well, that's pretty easy because do you agree um, that average acceleration is just the change in velocity over the change in time? So therefore, we could say that that is equal to Vf minus Vi over delta T, which is going to be 30 minus 10 divided by five, which is 20 divided by 5, which is 4 meters per second. And because they've asked you for the speed, you don't have to worry about direction. And sorry, it's terrible. It's meters per second squared. So the car's average acceleration would be 4 meters per second squared. Now, it's kind of tricky because acceleration is effectively, even though they've given you speeds, is effectively a vector. So if they ask you what is the car's average acceleration, you would have to go four meters per second squared forward. Okay, you can't just write four meters per second squared because acceleration by definition is vector. Then it says assume the car's acceleration is uniform. Calculate the distance it travels while its speed is changing. Okay, so now let's think about it. We've got VF is 30 forward. VI is 10. Acceleration is 4 meters per second, negative 2. The time it took was 5 seconds. And we, what are we trying to work out? The delta x, distance. So again, equations of Vf is equal to Vi plus 2a delta t. Vf squared is equal to Vi squared plus 2a delta x. Delta x is equal to vi delta t plus a half a t squared. And finally, delta x is equal to vf plus vi over 2 delta t. So the final velocity is 30. The initial velocity is 10. Acceleration is 4. The time it takes there is 5 seconds. And they want the delta x. So we do have all the information that we could possibly need. So we want something with delta x. We could use this one or this one or this one. Now, what did we work out? We worked out the acceleration. So do you agree the acceleration could be wrong? We could have made a mistake with that. So therefore, I'm going to try and use an equation that doesn't include acceleration. So I'm going to use that equation there. So I'm going to say delta x is equal to Vf plus Vi over 2 delta t. So the final velocity is 30 plus the initial velocity, which is 10, over 2 multiplied by the change in time, which is 5 seconds, right? 
So 30 plus 10 is 40 divided by 2 is 20. So it's 20 multiplied by 5, which is 100 seconds. There we go. Next, it says, in order to stop at a traffic light, um, a bus, okay, just to let you know, we're going to carry on doing these equations of motion. Um, yeah, that should keep us busy for the rest of the lesson. Then in the next lesson, we're going to do graphs of motion, okay, because you need to be able to remember what the rule was. It said you have to be able to explain using diagrams, graphs, and equations, and words. So you need to be able to explain in words or understand in words what they're talking about, the diagrams we've spoke, spoken about, So we and we're doing equations. So the last thing that we need to do is graphs, okay, so we'll work on that in the next lesson. It says in order to stop at a traffic light, a bus decelerates uniformly from a speed of 65 kilometers per hour, and they very sweetly convert that to 18 meters per second to 36 kilometers per hour, which is 10 meters per second in a distance of 40 meters. Determine the total distance traveled by the bus when the driver first applies the brakes at 18 meters per second when the bus comes to a stop. Okay, so this time we've got a bus. <sighs> Sorry, every time I see a bus or see the word bus, I think the wheels on the bus. I've got a little daughter. How can you tell? Okay, so there's a bus. Okay, and the wheels and the bus are going around. <laughs> okay, and the door's on the other side. Okay, so it's going this way. And it says that its initial speed is 18 meters per second. Um, and it bus decelerates uniformly from 18 to 10. So it stops, um, slows down to 10 meters per second in a distance of 40 meters. Okay, that's how long it took. So it's determined the total distance traveled by the bus from when the driver applies the first apply the brakes until when it comes to a stop. So then the final velocity error is zero. So we're going to assume there's a constant deceleration all the way through. It doesn't just stop doing a constant deceleration when it gets to 10 meters per second, that it's decelerating uniformly all the way through from the 18 to the final velocity of zero. So if that was the case, what do we need to do is we need to work out the acceleration during this bit here, because that will be the same as the acceleration over the whole bit. Okay, and then we can work out other things. Okay, so let's do this bit first. Let's do, we're going to do this bit first. And we're going to work out the acceleration. Okay, so we're going to say, right, if that's the case, we've got VF is 10, VI is 18. Acceleration is what we're trying to find out, but the delta X is 40 meters. Now they said VF squared is equal to VI squared plus 2A delta X. VF is equal to VI plus A delta T. Delta X is equal to VI delta T plus a half A delta T squared. And delta X is equal to VF plus VI over 2 delta T. Okay, so what do we want? We've got the final velocity, we've got the initial velocity, we've got displacement, we want acceleration, we need to use that equation there. So we're going to go VF squared is equal to VI squared plus 2A delta X. So grade 10, I'm not expecting you to write these equations every time you've got them. They're on your formula sheet. So there's no reason for you to be writing them down every time. Secondly, they're not, you don't have to memorize them. Again, you're given them, but you do need to know how to use them. So please make sure you can actually use your equations. So VF squared is going to be 10 squared is equal to the initial velocity of 18 squared plus 2 times by A times by 40. Okay. So do you agree that's going to be 10 squared minus 18 squared over 80 is going to give me my acceleration? Right, so what we need to do then is we need to now pop this into our calculator. So let's do that. Let's clear it and let's put a fraction in. 
and we're going to go 10 squared minus 18 squared all divided by 80 80 equals negative 14 over 5 but remember we sign students we don't like these fractions so it's minus 2.8 so acceleration equals negative 2,8 meters per second squared. Right, so that's acceleration that it used as it was going from year to year. But remember it used the same acceleration all the way through. So now they want to know what is the total distance traveled by the bus when it's further from year all the way to year. But we know that this is 40 meters. So do you agree we can just work out what that distance is and then add it? Okay. Or you could work it all out in one fell soup. It makes no difference. Okay, so I'm just going to erase the red stuff because I'm thinking we're going to do what I suggested originally, which is what we're just going to work out the second bit and add it to the 40 meters. So if we're doing that, okay, it's negative 2.8 meters per second squared here. Um, so let's just write that down. The acceleration is minus 2,8 meters per second, negative 2. Right, so if we have to look at just this displacement here, we know that the initial velocity is 10 and the final velocity is 0. We know the acceleration is minus 2,8 and they want delta t. So do you know we don't want delta t, we want delta x again. Sorry guys, uh, we want delta x. Delta x. So is equal to, so we're going to again use this equation, but this time we're substituting in and we're solving for delta x. So the final velocity is zero is equal to 10 squared plus 2 times for the acceleration of minus 2,8 delta x. So we've got minus 100 divided by minus 2, 8 to 16, 5.6 is equal to delta x. So these cancel obviously, so let's divide. So we're going to go 100 divided by 5.6 equals, so that distance is 17.86 meters, because remember you're always rounding off to two decimal places. So if that's the case, if this is a 7, it rounds us up to a 6, so 17.86 meters. So delta x is 17,86 meters. But now remember, that was just this bit here, okay? We also had that it traveled 40 meters from year to year, and they asked you for the total distance. So therefore, delta x total is going to be 40 plus 17,86, which is 57,86 meters. There we go. Awesome. Right, let's move on. Okay, now, okay, we've run out of time. So we will do the last, these two last questions. Um, today is, what's today? Today is Tuesday, so we'll do them on, okay, we're going to be alternating now. So we'll do them on Monday. Um, so, no, we won't. We will do them on, sorry, we'll do them on Tuesday next week. Um, no, we'll do them on Thursday. Oh my head, I don't know what's wrong with me today. We'll do them on Thursday. Okay, and then we'll move on to graphs of motion. Have a great day. Cheers, bye.